Between 1930 and 1935, 750,000 farms were lost to bankruptcy and foreclosure. The worst economic crisis in American history raised widespread awareness about the plight of migrant farm workers. A writer would take a leading role as a spokesman for the millions of farmers who suffered miserably. He advocated for government assistance to end the economic extortion that many farmers endured during the Great Depression. He was a leading American novelist, short story writer, and journalist. He is best known for his Depression-era novel, The Grapes of Wrath, for which he earned a Pulitzer Prize in 1940. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1962. When he died in 1968, his legacy is as one of the greatest advocates America's perpetually oppressed farm workers have ever had. His works have had a profound effect on the American people. Today, almost 50 years after his death, he is still a popular worldwide literary figure. Blake Almendinger, professor of humanities at UCLA, an expert on the American West, explains John Steinbeck's leadership. In terms of his leadership, the greats of wrath and the fact that he called attention to the plight of migrant workers during the Depression, well, I think he had a national impact upon America's consciousness. Bringing together the heart and the land. The Leadership and Legacy of America's Conscience, John Steinbeck. Baby, I know that we got trouble in the fields when the beggars walk. In the early 1900s, people moved to the plains to farm the fertile land. Then in the early 30s, the rain stopped falling and drought swept the land. No thought was ever given to the soil conservation. So when the winds came up, they blew away the precious topsoil. These winds and drought lasted for 10 years and were dubbed the Dust Bowl. People were forced to pack up what little they had and leave their farms to look for work. Thousands of displaced agricultural workers and their families headed to California to become migrant workers in the state's orchards and vegetable fields. It is known as one of the largest migrations in American history. It is estimated between three and 400,000 people left their homes in Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, and Missouri to settle in California. The Depression caught us without the ability to take care of it. It took a long time for us to develop the agencies to take care of such economic difficulties. Uh, when the dust uh, came up, the people were starving and they had no place to go. Giving voice to the common man. John Steinbeck was born in Salinas, California. Steinbeck attended Stanford University from 1920 to 1926, but never graduated. Social and political uprisings during the 1930s had a huge influence on Steinbeck's writings. Steinbeck struggled to make a living during the Depression. He worked alongside people who later became the characters in his books. In 1936, George West of the San Francisco News asked Steinbeck to do a series of stories on the Dust Bowl migrations. It was at this time Steinbeck met Tom Collins, an employee for the Federal Resettlement Administration. Steinbeck met him at the agency's Weed Patch Camp in Kern County, California. He traveled with Steinbeck, visiting various camps around the state. Collins became the inspiration for the manager, Jim Raleigh, of the Wheat Patch Camp in the Grapes of Wrath. Steinbeck stayed at the camp for several days. He talked to people and he read Tom Collins' reports and sent his own stories to the San Francisco News. The Grapes of Wrath was conceived from these reports and Steinbeck's experiences with the people living in these camps. He wrote about their poverty, homelessness, and despair. The Grapes of Wrath enlightened the rest of the country to the predicament of the migrant worker. Leadership Secrets of John Steinbeck Without doubt of reservation, John Steinbeck was a leader. Although his legacy is tied to his Great Depression era novels, Steinbeck's influence on American history runs much deeper and is largely unknown to the general public. For example, during World War II, John Steinbeck worked in the Office of Strategic Services, predecessor of today's Central Intelligence Agency. He was recruited by President Franklin Roosevelt to counter Hitler's propaganda machine. Ironically, Steinbeck was under surveillance by the Federal Bureau of Investigation after publication of The Grapes of Wrath. In 1942, Steinbeck wrote a letter to the U.S. Attorney General Francis Biddle asking, do you suppose you could ask Edgar's boys to stop stepping on my heels? Referring to FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover. 
During the 1950s, CIA Director Walter Smith asked Steinbeck to conduct intelligence during his travels throughout Europe. None of this information was public information until Steinbeck, Citizen Spy, was released in 2013. There's only one conclusion, and that's Steinbeck was a CIA asset. John Steinbeck also had ties to President John F. Kennedy. Steinbeck and his wife attended JFK's inauguration in 1961. Jackie Kennedy even asked Steinbeck to write John's biography after his death in 1963. Steinbeck had a personal relationship with President Lyndon Johnson. Hello? Hello. John, how are you? Mr. President, I'm just fine. We're not... In 1964, Steinbeck helped LBJ write his acceptance speech for his nomination for president. They are the needs and hopes of most of the people. Steinbeck advised President Johnson on his Vietnam policies. President Johnson found great encouragement in Steinbeck's words and had a lasting friendship. For his demonstrated leadership accomplishments, Steinbeck was awarded the nation's highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1964. During the 1970s, Steinbeck's writings set the stage for Cesar Chavez and the protests of the United Farm Workers of America. Chavez's family lived the reality of the Great Depression as depicted in Steinbeck's books. Chavez grape strikes were termed Wrath of Grapes Strikes in reference to Steinbeck's novel. Literary Legacy Steinbeck used the pen to push his political values to bring about social change. Steinbeck's most famous works during the 1930s were The Red Pony, which takes place on the ranch owned by the family of childhood friend. Steinbeck explored leadership in an dubious battle when social activist leaders emerged to unify workers to strike at a California fruit ranch. Steinbeck continues to explore a leader's impact on those being led and of mice and men, where ranch owners care only about maximizing profit and use intimidation and violence to create a demoralizing culture where workers suffer. The Grapes of Wrath is the epic tale of the Joad family from Oklahoma who flee their home to find the promised land. This novel sparked outrage. It was banned in Kern County, California, and throughout other parts of the United States for indecent content. Steinbeck was, was fearful enough about these groups that, you know, were uh, against him that in the 30s, um, for a long period, he actually carried a, a gun, and uh, he was armed, uh, which is kind of interesting. After the book's release, Steinbeck organized a Grapes of Breath benefit concert for migrant workers. It was at this benefit Woody Guthrie and Pete Seeger, the fathers of American folk music, first met. The famous song, This Land Is Your Land, was performed containing protest verses rarely heard. The 1995 song, The Ghost of Tom Joad by Bruce Springsteen, identified with the 1930-style social activism. Mama, wherever there's a cop, wherever there's a cop beating up a guy, I'll be there. Also gives a voice to the invisible, unheard, and the disenfranchised. Both Springsteen and Guthrie were influenced by Steinbeck's writing. John Steinbeck was an avid recorder of American history. His desire to fight for the common man led him to write some of the country's most important books. He criticized economic forces that divided society into haves and have-nots. I think Steinbeck's legacy is to make us aware of um, this whole notion of people whose lives um, are on the margin. Um, and that's true of his whole career because not only the books of the 30s, but he went overseas to the Vietnam War in 1966, and he wrote about common soldiers. He was really interested in what it, was, what it meant to be just an ordinary soldier during the war, um, not a general, not a you know, leader in the war. Steinbeck's works are on required reading lists. Of Mice and Men is one of the ten most frequently read books in school. Though The Grapes of Wrath has been a staple of the high school curriculum for years, The Great Recession of 2008 has made it more relevant than ever for English and history classes. Brother, I don't know. What decade are we in? I have to be honest, I never thought that The Grapes of Wrath would strike me as the most topical movie for right now. But here we are. People are losing their homes, losing their jobs, losing everything, and nobody knows exactly who's to blame. Even South Park drew on Steinbeck's classic during a recent episode. I'm going down the road feeling bad. The question John Steinbeck raised in the 30s and 40s. Homelessness, migration, poverty, moral responsibility, public hypocrisy, and always the struggle for human connection and dignity still gnaw at the underbelly of American life. 